What's up guys, BC Amplified. It's Thursday, September 28, 2017, and you know what that means. If it's Thursday, it's Amplified Q&A time. Now we're putting this motherfucker out late tonight, man. I got home from the gym really fucking late, guys, after a full day of scouting locations for Tyler's Day 30. Uh, I'm beat, but we're going to put this video out there, man. We're at least going to have some fun for the next 15 to 20 minutes. Um, it might not go over 20 minutes. I say that all the time. Usually it does, but at least 15 to 20 minutes. I want to get to a few questions from the Twitter machine and the YouTube machine. Uh, and I don't want to waste any time, so let's get to it. First one's going to be from Del Rio. And I am hoping that this isn't from the Alberto Del Rio family, because he's quite the douchebag. Uh, but I doubt it is. This is a good Del Rio, I can tell. Del Rio asked, how upset am I that WWE is going Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar for WrestleMania 34? Honestly, guys, I would have been a lot more upset even two to three months ago. Um, because that, is, I mean, if you, that is going to be your main event at WrestleMania, um, that is just going to infuriate uh, any actual hardcore wrestling fan. Nobody would want to see that. Um... And, and by the way, guys, the reason this is really in the news a lot more lately, especially the last seven days, is because now people are starting to see that that is actually going to be the main event of WrestleMania 34. That's not a rumor, guys. Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, WrestleMania 34 main event. Roman Reigns defeats Brock Lesnar for the championship. That is what's going to happen. We knew that for a long time now, and everyone just kind of kept quiet about it because everyone thought, okay, well, we, we'll hope that something changes. We'll let time go on and something will change. But now what started happening, especially within the last week, but especially the last two weeks even, is the path started to clear out. And now we have tunnel vision. We see a straight line to WrestleMania. And now we see the clear picture. It's Roman and it's Brock. Exactly what we thought it was. But now even the casuals are starting to see what is happening. And that's why a lot of people are now starting to get vocally displeased about it. And they're starting to speak up. And then people are pissed off. Um, so, anyway, that's just the backstory on it, guys. As far as how I feel about it, again, as I started off with this question, the answer to it. Um, if it was two months ago, absolutely pissed off. Now, not so much. I'm going to tell you why. Two months ago, you still had cookie cutter Roman Reigns, the one that's getting shoved down our throats and trying to be the cookie cutter baby face, the squeaky clean image and all that bullshit. No, nobody is trying to buy that. Nobody wants to buy that. Nobody wants that on their TV. So now it started happening because we did speak up so many at so many arenas. We did boo our fucking brains out. We yelled, we screamed, we hollered how we did not want this guy in these main events. And what happened was he started week by week getting more healer, right? More heelish. Now, Vince McMahon, guys, will never make Roman Reigns full throttle heel. Ever. And I'll tell you why. This past summer, as far as merchandise sales, Roman Reigns was number two in the highest merchandise sales behind John Cena. You know what that means? With John Cena now gone full time... Roman Reigns is going to be the biggest merchandise seller for WWE. So even if we say we don't like them, even if we hear all those boos at the arena, and even if arenas are only three quarters sold, in some cases only half sold, and everything else is tapered off, SmackDown has a bigger issue with that, by the way, so that's not Roman Reigns' fault. But even if all of that is true, which it is, Roman Reigns is still bringing in boatloads of cash for Vince McMahon. Piles and piles. Merchandise is through the roof for Roman Reigns. And that's a lot of fucking WWE's income. And then if you look at pay-per-view buys, which by the way, a lot of people think pay-per-view is dead with WWE because of the network. And WWE always says, the only way to watch this is on the WWE network. That's actually false, guys. A lot of the pay-per-views, in fact, most of them can still be watched on pay-per-view. And records show that when Roman Reigns is in prevalent matches on those pay-per-views, the pay-per-views actually sell pretty damn good. So, Roman Reigns is bringing in money elsewhere. People want to blame him for the house show's uh, attendance. And unfortunately for him, that's true because if Hulk Hogan got blamed for it back in the day, and Steve Austin got blamed for it, and The Rock, if houses were down, the champions at the time, or the head top faces they would get blamed for it so you're damn right Roman Reigns has to take some of that blame but the other blame the rest of it goes on just people not wanting to leave their house anymore guys 
Major League Baseball attendance is down as well. National Football League, all numbers are down. You look at AMC movie theaters, just going out, taking your girlfriend out to the movies. That is down drastically to the point where they actually had to put recliners in all of their theaters so people would get a more homey experience and hope that they come out. So, of course, WWE is going to suffer as, as well. That's not just any individual or even any collective talent's problem. But again, because Roman is being pushed as the top face, he's got to take the brunt, the brunt of that as well. And, and he's going to. But if you're going to take some of that, then also you have to look at where we are as a society. We live in a society where you can Uber, you can have your Uber go pick up your McDonald's and drop it off at your house. Uber does that shit now. You do not have to leave your house for even McDonald's. If you want a girlfriend, all you got to do is swipe right. Or ladies, if you want a boyfriend, all you got to do is go on your phone and swipe right. Back in my day, we actually had to make eye contact and stutter ourselves to a date. I I was just wondering if you if you there's I mean there's a place we can drink there's water and, and look like fucking idiots. Luckily, I was a dashing young man, so I got some on my fucking looks. But fuck, did I stutter too, man? Because fuck, you're 12 years old, you're 13, you're 14, you're 15, you're trying to get a date. Nowadays, you pick up your fucking phone, and you ain't even gotta go take that date out. You bring your date over, and you call your Uber to go pick up your fucking McDonald's or your pizza or your fucking Olive Garden or wherever the fuck you wanna go, right? By the way, don't actually take your date to any of those places, especially if it's like the first date, because she will not accept the second date, guys. You got to bring her somewhere, actually. If you don't have a car or anything, maybe you're from New York or whatever, dude, fucking uh, have your fucking Uber drop you off at a nice place, especially the first time, all right? I, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> Some people are going to get their first girlfriend and be like, Uber, <laughs> can you get me the number four meal? What do you want, babe? Uh, you will not get a second date. Anyway, this, this fucking uh, answer has gone off the rails. Let me get back on track. So that's where we are as a society. Roman cannot be blamed for all the attendance issues. But he is bringing in piles of cash. And for those reasons, Roman Reigns will not be turning full throttle heel ever. Unless his merchandise really fucking just dips. But we, we usually don't see that. With Hulk Hogan, with Steve Austin, with The Rock, with John Cena. When they reach that high on merchandise uh, lists... They never in their career drop out of the top five. So that goes to show you guys that Roman Reigns is pretty much going to be there for the next fucking 10 years. Um, <laughs> collectively, all the wrestling fans around the world just drop to their fucking knees. No, Lord! Not 10 years of Roman. But um, because we are starting to see more heelish Roman... He's not the cookie cutter guy that he was two months ago. Every week he starts going a little more heelish... And he starts bragging about how he retired The Undertaker, knowing it's going to collect booze. He's going to start bragging about how he sidelined John Cena, knowing it's going to collect booze. But this new heelish Roman Reigns doesn't give a fuck if you cheer him or if you boo him. His whole character now is, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to beat the shit out of people. I'm the fucking big dog. This is my yard. Don't fuck with it. Don't piss in my yard or I will fucking beat the shit out of you. I like that character, man. I would love full throttle heel, absolutely. If you watch this channel, the last year I've been saying, turn Roman Reigns full throttle heel. But then I saw the numbers that he's actually bringing in and the kind of money he's making Vince McMahon. And now, you know, there comes a time you gotta look at business. But on the flip side, you have to listen to your audience. You cannot put on shows like Royal Rumble in Philadelphia and have it go off the air with the one guy they didn't want to see. Win that match, Roman Reigns, Royal Rumble. You cannot have that. And the whole Royal Rumble was ruined because the whole crowd was booing as the Royal Rumble went off the air. You can never have events like that. Or how many pay-per-views have you watched? WrestleMania defeating Triple H for the fucking championship. And boos ended WrestleMania. Boos ended WrestleMania. You can't have that happen. And again, that's why I'm a little more okay with this WrestleMania 34 rematch of WrestleMania 31. Because at WrestleMania 31, if Roman Reigns beat Brock Lesnar, I was cringing the whole time during that match. Because I honestly thought they were giving the strap to Roman. And I thought that was the worst thing. Nobody ever wanted to see that, especially not at WrestleMania. Luckily, last minute, they had uh, Seth Rollins cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase. And he picked up the championship. But that whole match ended up being a lot better than I thought it was going to be. But I was too busy cringing because I was waiting for the three count and Roman picking up the championship. Again, luckily it never happened. Seth Rollins got it. But 
If it was that time, a few years ago, absolutely not. Now, now that I see this more heelish, again, he's still a face in a way, in a major way, but it's more heelish. And he's not a cookie cutter anymore. So if we still have six months, if they can build the next six months and have him toe the line of like a heel, still, I don't give a fuck how everyone thinks of me. Even now and again, even have him cheat to win like an actual heel. Faces have done that before. This wouldn't be the first time. You know, make him seem like a heel. Make him go out there and cut badass promos, even though he can't really do that. But I'll take some bitches, man. If you want to call someone a bitch seven times, eight times, that'll add some fucking luster to it. All right. You know, he just has to... There's so many areas that he can just play a heel while still being a face. And he's starting to become better at that, you know? I mean, we've put this guy through hell. We've booed the shit out of him. We've, we've fucking taunted this guy. This guy. We, he's been embarrassed just a few weeks ago. John Cena. I mean, it's called a promo, kid. If you want to be the big dog, you're going to have to learn how to do one. I mean, that's embarrassing as fuck. Right in the middle of the ring. And he just put his head down and just smiled and said, I'll take the shit, man. Shit on me. I'll take it. You know what? I'm paying my dues now. So, by, by no means am I a full-fledged Roman Reigns fan by any means. I'm not even a Roman Reigns fan still. But I am more inclined now to be okay with it than I was at WrestleMania 31. But here's the thing. If you're going to actually give me Roman and Brock at 34, which they're going to do, you still have six months to make me give a fuck about wanting to see Roman Reigns in that match. The match itself is going to be good. I think Roman and Brock, we've already seen it, can put on a good match. They just beat the shit out of each other. Two tanks colliding. It's what's going to happen afterwards. When Roman actually wins the championship at 34, because he's going to, are we going to see it in a cookie-cutter fashion, or are we going to have the more heelish Roman Reigns and collecting that fucking booze and taunting the audience? Because that's what he's going to have to do, because people are going to boo him out of the building. But if he's taunting them, and he is acting like a fucking full-throttle heel, I'm going to be cool with that, man. That's fucking heat at that point. That's not just hate. At 31... Even like two months ago, it was literally, we just don't want to see you. We want you out of the arena. Leave. Now, he's actually fucking grown on me because his character has grown. He's gotten fucking better. He stopped giving a fuck. So I'll shut up about that, guys. But Roman Reigns now, compared to Roman Reigns even two, three months ago, is leaps and bounds different. He no longer gives a fuck about us. And isn't that what we wanted from the beginning? Now, there's so many people out there, again, that are voicing their displeasure. A lot of people are not on board with how I feel about slowly gravitating a little bit to Reigns. A lot of people still want nothing to do with Roman Reigns. Uh, in, in your case, guys, I hear you. I ain't disagreeing. I, again, I was fully on that fucking same train just two months ago. And I'll reiterate, I'm still not a Roman Reigns fan right now. He's just growing on me and I'm learning to, to, I'm learning to adjust as he does to being a heel-ish. Because he's never going to be full throttle heel. But as he adjusts and he becomes more meaner and he becomes more, I don't give a fuck. And he becomes more of a fucking dastardly kind of character. I'm going to adjust with that um, because I know where they're going with business. And because of that, guys, I know you guys are just not going to convert. And for you guys, hold on. It's going to be a bumpy ride. WrestleMania, Roman Reigns is going to get that. So either you start to adjust. Um, it's not accepting. A lot of people want to confuse that with, oh, you know, you're just going to accept the bullshit. Well, first of all, if you want to watch WWE, what else are you going to do? We're going to voice our displeasure, absolutely. But you're going to have to accept it. Roman is getting the strap at 34. That is an old school Batista saying, deal with it, because that's what's happening. None of us are going to change that shit. We're not going to Daniel Bryan our way out of this. Vince is getting older, and that's the one thing he is dead set on. Roman's getting that strap. Now, we can adjust, and we can make it fun, because at least Roman is trying. He's trying to make it more fun. He's trying to go as heelish as he can, but Vince won't let him go full throttle. Or you can just really hate it. And again, this is going to be a bumpy six months for you guys because WrestleMania, he's getting that strap. 15 minutes on this topic. What the fuck? Let's move on, guys. 
Harry Stone from Twitter is asking me my top five favorite movies. This is a little bit of a, uh, this is a good way to get away from a serious topic, which we were just talking about. Uh, we'll bring it down a little bit. We'll have some fun. I'll give you my top five favorite movies. Number five, and now guys, these are all from the 80s and 90s, by the way. I just want to get that out there. There's nothing new. A lot of you guys probably have never even seen some of these or maybe all of these movies. But number five is a, is a toss-up. It's a double, double movie. It's not five and four. They both come in at number five. It's a tie. Home Alone and Home Alone 2 with Macaulay Culkin. If you've never seen it, go fucking check it out, man. Um, a big part of my fucking childhood. Those were the movies, man. Macaulay Culkin gets forgotten at home when his family goes on vacation. So he's left at home all alone. But the story really picks up when these two robbers, Joe Pesci and, and it's Mav and Harry. Shut up, Mav! Uh, fucking, I'm sorry, I just, I know the whole movie by heart line-wise, man. I, I, and then there's Home Alone 2. What the fuck am I doing? I'm speaking in circles here. First of all, these robbers try to rob this house, but Macaulay Culkin is a smart kid. Even though he's like eight or nine years old, he's setting up booby traps in his house. So this kid is taking on two robbers. Hilarious. Then you go to Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, where you have Macaulay Culkin taking on these same robbers but in New York City. Somehow Macaulay Culkin separates from his family at the airport. His plane goes to New York. His family goes to Florida. So Macaulay Culkin is stuck in the city. The same two robbers broke out of prison. And they meet up with each other. And now these robbers want a piece of fucking Macaulay Culkin. But Macaulay Culkin finds his, his relative's apartment. A huge apartment. And he sets up more booby traps. It's fucking awesome, guys. At midnight tonight, we're hitting Duncan's toy chest. Uh, anyway, sorry. I just love every line in that movie. Both of those movies. Home Alone, Home Alone 2. Number four, guys. I would have to go Jerry Maguire. Now, this is where you guys are going, oh, BC's going soft on us because it's a little bit of a love story. Um, it's got Tom Cruise. It's got Renee Zellweger. Guys, th the reason this movie is on my list, you're, you're talking, what, back in 1996, this movie came out. Um, so I was really fucking young and I had a crush on Renee Zellweger, huge. So automatically that movie was going to be rewatched a lot of times. And then on top of that, Tom Cruise was such an amazing actor in that movie. He plays a sports agent and he's pretty much at the bottom of it, the bottom of the barrel. Um, he's had enough. Uh, he's not respected within his peers. He has one client left and he vows to make this work. And, uh, who is it? Uh, Cuba Gooden Jr., I believe, is also in that. He plays the client. He's amazing as well. The cast is amazing. So not only did I have a crush on Renee Zellweger, guys, but, but Tom Cruise in that movie is the reason I wanted to be an actor. One of the reasons. There's, like, there's a couple of situations. But Jerry Maguire, Tom Cruise, that character is what made me, years later, want to go to New York uh, and become an actor. So number four, Jerry Maguire. Number three is an old school movie a lot of you guys maybe have not even heard of and it's called The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. And it's just a group of high schoolers who got in trouble uh, during the week at high school and they have to spend a Saturday at the school in detention. And let's just say it's just how they spent their day. And there's mischief, there's fun, uh, it's exciting at times. Um, it's just, a, it's an old school classic movie of how these high schoolers spent their Saturday in detention. Um, oh man, I don't even want to say anymore. You just, uh, Google up, you YouTube fucking, uh, The Breakfast Club. You'll see some scenes, you'll read about it, and hopefully you guys get to see that movie. Uh, what was that? That was number three. Number two is a movie called American Beauty, and that's with Kevin Spacey. And that is a guy, I believe he's like in his 40s or his 50s, and... He's, he's having a midlife crisis and he's just like, you know what? No, I, I'm just, I'm fed up with life. My wife and I fell out of love. We don't even love each other anymore. The only time we talk is when we argue. Um, my fucking, I, I, I don't love what I do. I think he even got fucking fired. I forgot. I haven't seen the movie in so long. I used to watch it like once every fucking month. You would think I would know by heart. I got to go watch that again, actually. Sometime this week, if I get an hour and a half, I'm going to watch American Beauty. But anyway, this guy's having a midlife crisis, Kevin Spacey. And he ends up, like, having a crush on his daughter's best friend. And it's just, he just, this midlife crisis, he ends up smoking weed. He ends up, like, uh, flirting with his daughter's fucking best friend. He gets a job at the local hamburger place, the equivalent to McDonald's. So he basically goes back, like, 20, 25 years, much to the dismay of his cheating wife. 
Um, it's just a fun movie. American Beauty, that's number two. And number one, guys, Dazed and Confused. The last day of high school. I believe it's 1976. And it's the last day of high school. And it's how these, uh, these seniors... Uh, spend the last day and, and it starts off with them chasing around the junior high kids that are going to be freshmen and they each have to get whoopings on their fucking ass man they each get a paddle on their fucking ass it's an initiation to become a freshman and uh it's just them partying that night and just the way that they spent their last day it's a fun fucking high schoolish type movie and uh that's where i get uh all, all right all right all right party at the moon tower that's fucking matt mcconaughey and it's also where i get Check you later. That's fucking uh, my boy Slater. So all of those lines are from Dazed and Confused. Uh, it's just a fun movie. And by the way, Renee Zellweger is actually in that movie as well. So go figure, right? My uh, my childhood crush there. So those are my top five movies. Yeah, glad we did that. That was fun. Now let's go over to the next one. And that's Billy Johnston with a T. I love Johnston more than Johnson. This is over on YouTube, by the way. Um, and he says... What do you think about Vince hammering down on the Bullet Club? I'm, a, I'm thinking he means, because this news story really just busted out the last, what, six hours. Uh, Vince McMahon is suing the Bullet Club and, and Cody Rhodes for using the too sweet and the cease and desist now is, is, is out for real. Um, there's just these lawsuits that are coming down and it's really stemming guys from the Bullet Club showing up to Monday Night Raw this past Monday. The Bullet Club showed up to Monday Night Raw with Cody Rhodes and they said we're taking over and all this, you know, basically they're reenacting what DX did to WCW back in 1998. However, what I think really pissed Vince McMahon off is that they went up to a fan and the fan said, I got my ticket for free. And Cody Rhodes and them were making fun of that and saying they're dead, you know, they're, they're tapering tickets, man. And, and, and if that's the case, then you did come here to see the Bullet Club. And I think that just enraged Vince McMahon because Vince McMahon always made fun of the fact that WCW was giving away tickets. Now it comes to light that WWE is giving away tickets. You know, it wasn't long after that. It was just a few hours after that WWE issued these, uh, it wasn't lawsuits. I'm sorry. These are actually just, uh, papers, a cease and desist. Stop using the fucking too sweet. Stop using the cease and fucking, uh, the, the other thing that, that they were using. Um, the cease and desist is now for real. Uh, this is going all over the place, man. Vince McMahon has to relax. It's the Bullet Club. Nobody ab outside of the diehard fucking fans give a fuck about the Bullet Club. Half the people there that were chanting Bullet Club didn't really even know who the other members in the Bullet Club were. So relax, Vince. But because Vince got his pride and his ego hurt, now he's coming after uh, the Bullet Club. And if they do not oblige... Uh, they will be hit with lawsuits. In fact, uh, th th that could come as early as Monday. So I think Bullet Club is going to have to... I, I, I know there are shirts that they were using that Vince is going after. A bunch of shit that they have to stop. So sucks for the Bullet Club, but you know what? They, they had a good run at it. They, Vince didn't give a fuck about any of this until they showed up Monday at Raw to invade Monday Night Raw and in until they kind of embarrassed Vince McMahon in WWE and saying, that, oh, you're giving away tickets now? I think that's really what enraged Vince McMahon, uh, without a doubt. Damn, guys, 24 minutes. I only got in three fucking questions because I run my fucking mouth, damn it. I just got back from the gym, and you know, I, I, I haven't talked to you guys in a while, and I just wanted to shoot the shit, that's all. I apologize, guys. Um, I will say this uh, weekend update tomorrow, um, we will go... Um, I'll make up for it. I'll go at least a good 25 to 30 minutes on tomorrow's weekend update. I do that every week anyway, so what the fuck am I saying? But uh, I, I appreciate you guys letting me off the hook now. Under 25 minutes, I do have to hit the showers. Relax. Get ready for my Packers game tonight, baby. The Green Bay Packers are playing tonight against the Chicago fucking Bears. Um, at least I think they're playing. There's so much NFL turmoil right now. Fans are fucking boycotting, and, and people are kneeling and standing and doing handstands and cartwheels during the National Anthem, and the whole world's going fucking nuts. But as long as we collectively disagree on Roman Reigns, that's all we need to disagree on. Uh, BC Amplified, guys. Much love to all you guys. Smash that subscribe button because YouTube is trying to fuck with your boy. Constantly flagging all my videos. And then two days later, they're like, oh, congratulations, BC Amplified. We have determined your video should not have been flagged. 
You can start making some fucking advertisements now. Well, great, after two fucking days when I'm already on to the third next video and nobody gives a shit about that one anymore. Thanks a lot, YouTube, you dumb fuck. BC Amplify, guys. Much love. Let's rock it out. I'm not going to lie. It's a little bit later in the night, but we are going to have a couple more coffees. We're going to continue to kick ass tonight. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. We'll check you later.